Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Sovereign Society podcast. I'm just going to say <laughs> <laughs> the amount of uh, challenges that we have had recording this episode is just already telling me that we are clearing out some major debris in this conversation today. And I'm pumped for that because, you know me, I live for this shit. So I'm so excited, so, so, so excited to have Ashley Puller here because if there's anyone that I've seen on social media lately, this woman, she is just crushing it. And not only that, as I've been building websites for like 20 years and I'm passionate about branding, her branding is on point. So I'm so grateful Ashley's here. I met Ashley through a former client of mine. You may remember Nina the lawyer. And I worked with Nina for seven months. And then I started seeing more and more of like who she was promoting and posting. And Ashley was one of them. Um, so I started following Ashley and I'm like, damn, this bitch gets it. So I'm, I'm uh -huh. so, so, so pumped you're here, Ashley. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat. I'm so excited to be here. To your point, you know, we connected through Nina, who I think kind of like embodies both of us well, where Nina and I are very similar. <laughs> you and Nina are very similar. I feel like it's kind of, Nina's like a perfect blend of the two of us together, where uh, this conversation is just going to be so fun. Um, and I've loved following you and all of that stuff. So it's been a long time coming and I'm happy to be here. Totally. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. And it's amazing because I'm, I don't know about you, but I just feel really grateful to be in a time where it's about collaboration, right? We're coming together. Like here we are talking about another, you know, leader in the online business world. And here's Nina coming through. Here's you. Here's me. And instead of like having resentment or you know, as it has been of this competition for so long, all of us, and there's many, it's not just the three of us, but there's so many others. We, we're really passionate about supporting each other and the collaboration and really lifting each other up and celebrating each other's wins. And I don't know about you, but to me, that just feels like massive progress in the world. And um, it's our generation that's doing it. You know, the millennials, I mean, granted, like there's, you're a millennial, right? You're, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm 33. Yeah. yeah, perfect. We're the same age. So we're, we're, I think that we've seen uh, so much of like the patterns before with business. And while there were some nuggets of wisdom there, there's been a lot of transmuting of what isn't in alignment with where we're going. And I think that's why we were having so many tech issues before that um, is because it's people like you, people like me, people like Nina, so many other people out there that are disrupting the old patterns around business and are starting to cultivate more ethical business. And that isn't just... Mm -hmm through, you know, the way you run your business, but it's the way you support other businesses as well. So I would love to hear, you know, your thoughts on that and what you're seeing with the evolution of business, especially with the rise of entrepreneurship. You know, I think you have such a phenomenal point. I had a, I had a, a client of mine say to me that the online space just felt so clicky to her. And I've, I can't stop thinking about it because I, and I'm, I don't have that experience and I keep coming back to like, am I being naive? Am I not seeing things the same way? Am I not opening my eyes to another person's experience well enough? And I'm not going to dismiss how she feels. She has every right to feel exactly how she feels and all of those things. But my experience has truly not been that way. I have met people who are like, you need to work with so-and-so. And, hey, let me connect you with this person. And, oh, my gosh, I see you're doing this great thing. Hell yeah. Right? So I'm experiencing a lot of, to your point, community, celebration, collaboration, and all the Asians. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah, all the Asians. All the Asians. And, you know, with that, I think that there was a wave of girl boss attitude of like, go 
get your shit, girl. You know what I mean? Like, go take it. And I don't think that it was wrong, but I think that it hasn't evolved. And Mm. we are the people evolving and pushing a new narrative, which is like, Mm -hmm. sure, great, thanks. Like, yes, like, go make the money and go do it in any way possible. But like, since we've watched let's say this, you know, generation before us, and it's not really like a full generation, really, but like, totally, you, I don't need to name names. We know who, I, who I'm kind of referencing, who's kind of big in the space. You know, when we watched other people, we were like, okay, so they can do it. So we can do it. And then as we started watching other people's roads, we started saying like, I think we could do this a little bit nicer. Like, I think mm. that we could be a little bit more kind. And one thing that we do within my business at Team AP Consulting is we, we continuously say like, it is humanity first, right? Mm-hmm. For instance, we have, uh, you can change a call at any time. You can't get on a call in five minutes, never a penalization. You got to take care of your mental health. You're not feeling it. You're not in the right mind space. By all means, change it. Granted, I get to do the same, right? So we also are coming from a place of like, lean into what feels good. Like, obviously we have boundaries and we want to make sure that everybody is being supported properly. But you know, humanity first. I have women on my team who are mothers. So they're like, Hey, I can't do that. That's playtime. Cool. Talk to you later. Go have fun. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that we're in a different era of business where one round of female entrepreneurs kind of said like, Hey, we're opening up the door so all of you guys can come in. And we're like, let's make it cute. Let's make it nice. Let's decorate. (laughs) Let's make it a good space. We want to enjoy the space that we're spending time in. Thanks for opening up the door, but we're going to, we're going to take it from here a little bit. That's my perspective. Mm -hmm. Amazing. That's an interesting one. I love the humanity first because, you know, There is a time for discipline, but I think more than discipline, the stronger, more heartful space is devotion, right? Mm. And so I like to see it as like devotion first. Like I need to devote time for me to like honor my mental health. I need to devote time for me to fill up my cup, right? Those are the things that of nourishment to me. Like there's, there's a lot, there's a lot more of a desire for nourishment, especially in the online space, because I mean, you know, I I don't know about you, but as someone who's been studying marketing and business for, you know, over 15 plus years, because I don't, I went to school for this. And so, and just my whole experience, especially in the marketing online space, things are evolving and they always evolve. So patterns and um, strategies of like two years ago may not be relevant today. So you have to also stay on your toes and be aware of trends and what's working, what's dying out and adjust accordingly. Mm. And it's not like what the whole world is revolved around either. I don't know about you, but like for me, ever since like the pandemic and everything shutting down and people being more at home, I think there's been a rise of taking care of your mental health first. Um, and there is also more of um, a desire and, or I should really say an awareness of like filling up your cup first. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't know about you, but like something that's really been moving me lately and something that I know I'm shifting a lot of my business because you know, as I record this, uh, two days ago was my best friend who is my mom's best friend's daughter. So she was my sister. It was her funeral. And I found out the day of her funeral. Thanks. It's, it's, it's actually been a blessing. She's been guiding me on the other side, but I appreciate it. But I've had five deaths in the last two months. And so for me, like, it's about my, mental health, obviously, I need to be aware of. Because if you want to run an ethical business where you're of service and you're sharing, first of all, you need to make sure that you're coming from a space where your cup is not just full, but it's overflowing. And so I think, like you said, like humanity first, there's a level of respect of people. And I think because topics like mental health, for instance, are, um, they're not taboo anymore as they were, you know, maybe two, five, 10, whatever years ago. Um, I think again, after the pandemic and a lot of people were really tested, uh, mental health is really on the forefront and we need to figure out how do we infuse this in with business uh, so that we can not only be of service, but be of service from a space of integrity of who we are. And everyone, 
And I said this in a previous episode, everyone grieves differently. So we need to respect that. And to be of service, you know, is about, again, integrity and like being who you are. But sometimes we need that time for ourselves. We need to Mm -hmm. understand that we don't need to follow the trends of like, go, 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 push, push, push. Um, because everything is unfolding as it should. So I would just love to hear my favorite quote. (laughs) I would just love to hear like your experience of, you know, you're running, you're taking care of yourself. You're running AP consulting, you know, you're running your new brands, me time. And then you have like fast forward production where you're doing podcasting. Like how the hell do you manage all of this? Plus yourself, like, and your mental health. This is the big thing that I want to know. Like everything that's on your plate, how do you find yourself taking care of yourself and nourishing you so that you can be of service from that space of overflow? You know, a lot of people, this is the question I always get. How can you possibly do all of this, right? How can you run Team AP Consulting where we have, you know, over, we have about 50 people in a membership, which I'm very intimately involved in. I have a group program of 15 people. I have six monthly retainer clients. I do VIP days. I do strategy sprints. I have a team of seven. And then also I have me time, which is my wellness brand. And I have a team of about four to five people over there. And then I have fast forward productions. And it's like, I'm dating. I'm have friends. I am like traveling around. Like, How are you able to do everything? And at the end of the day, it's about prioritization and communication. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that like, I I tell everybody this, that if you want to do a lot of things, you have to get used to upsetting a lot of people because everybody's going to want something from you at some point and you can't make everyone happy. So instead of being like, I'm going to make everyone happy, you focus on like, who's the most important people to be happy. And for me, the most important people are the people who are paying us on a monthly basis for our retainer services. You're paying us a ton of money to like, make sure that your businesses run well. You're my number one priority. You are answer you in the middle of a concert important. You are, I'm going to sleep and I see a message at 1 a.m. and I'm responding important, right? And then knowing that my membership is lower priority for me, right? So if I want to ignore it for a couple days because I'm deep in work, then I'm going to, but they need to understand that so that expectations are managed, right? The other thing is that I always try to look at completely unrelated industries or unrelated experiences and find lessons in them that I can attach to business. And I have learned a lot and I'm not a parent. I don't have kids, but I've learned, I have parents on my team. A lot of my best friends have kids and I've learned a lot about business and ways to be better in business from parenthood tips, which is really interesting. And a lot of what I noticed from different parenting books, because I've read two parenting books to see how I can connect it to business. And what I've noticed is that a lot of things say to be a better parent to your children, don't focus on your relationship with your children. Focus on your relationship with your partner, because if you guys are so in love and you guys are so filled up and you're so supportive of each other, your kids benefit. And so that's something I tied into my business is like my clients are the most important thing, but my team is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. If I am nourishing my team and if I'm managing them and if I'm cultivating talent and if I'm empowering them and showing them opportunities for growth and I'm there for them and I'm leading them into a space of success, my clients will be happy because they are being nurtured by people who are excited, who are seen, who are validated. And so for me, that was one thing that I've been putting into place the past few months of like, it used to, I used to be very clear. I would say it to my team. I'd say it to my clients. I'd say it on my social. My clients come first. I come second. My team comes third. And that has changed. Now it is, I come first. My team comes second. My clients come third. Because my clients will suffer if those two things are not priorities first. So that's one thing that I've kind of picked up is like, If you do have a team and let's say you don't have a team, then you're the team. You have to be the most important thing in your business. And that might mean saying, hey, I can't get this done today. For instance, I have a podcast that's supposed to go live on uh, literally on Monday. My podcast producer, who's a friend of mine, was like, hey, I need this Friday morning if you want this on Monday. And I said, no, 
I know that your boundary is that you want things a week in advance. I didn't honor that boundary. I need some space to kind of prioritize other things. Let's take a break next week and we'll come back the week, the following week. Would I like a podcast episode next week? Yes. Was I going to use that podcast episode to sell something next week? Yes. But at the end of the day, there are other things that are more priority to me. And the easiest way to rank it, I mean, I hate to say it, is money. Whoever's paying me the most is going to get the higher, higher priority. That's just it, right? So my podcast is lower priority because I'm not making money from it. Um, however, I do, in essence, in the long Yeah, I was long just, I, and that's the thing. There's a way that you do because this is how you also nurture your clients to for them to right, have right. to cultivate trust in that way. Totally. Yeah, and I and I do make money from the podcast. I'm not going to act like I don't, but it's not as like transactional, so it's not as totally. easy to see it that way. Totally. Um, so for me, it's like, how do I take care of myself? One, I know that I need play in my business. Mm. I need to work on things during the week that actually are fucking dumb. You know, I need to be really excited to, you know, oh, I had this idea and I want to make a PowerPoint for it. I need space to say, oh my gosh, I want to like update the pictures on my website. And, you know, there are so many like frivolous little things that we just like outsource, outsource to either a VA or someone on the team. And my team can do all of these things, but I know that I need to play in my business. If I'm not mm-hmm. feeling playful, I'm not showing up well. I don't have mm-hmm. good energy. I can't give. I can't support. I can't be creative. I can't problem solve. So I need to integrate play. I also take a day every week to myself. Um, no client calls. I try not to be responsive to clients very much. Obviously, if something's necessary, I'm there to work inside my business so that I know how my money is. I know how everything's going. I have a plan for the next few weeks. So Your that CEO I also, day. My CEO day. Exactly. Totally. Thank you. Uh, so that's something that's been really important to me. And then also I have a night a week. I've promised myself that I will make myself dinner because I love to cook. That's my happy place. <laughs> and I have one day a week that I make sure that I'm social in some capacity. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not like what's the bare minimum to keep me happy, but it's like, am I doing at least that? Like, am I doing at least that, right? Where I can be like, you know, traveling around the world, but not just like stuck in a co working space the whole time. And like, no, I've been enjoying LA. I'm going on hikes. I'm meeting new people. I'm going to dinner. I'm, you know, enjoying the weather and all of these fun things. So for me, like, I, this is a very long winded answer and I haven't really given you much space to talk. So I apologize, but it's very, oh, you're much good, babe. Me. You're in flow. <laughs> yeah. It's very much for me. Like what makes me excited as a person? Like I like to cook. I like to watch new girl. I like to play the Sims and I make, Oh sure my I gosh. I can't believe you just said that. That was like my go-to in childhood was the Sims. I <laughs> am addicted to the Sims. There's like a group of us that are like obsessed with the Sims. I'm obsessed with Rosebud, her. Actually, Rosebud, semicolon, exclamation mark, right? Yeah, right? Like the, <laughs> the cheat codes. Uh, yeah, it's so funny. I love The Sims, you know, whatever. I own it. I love it. I think it's so much fun. And it's kind of like a little bit of like a projection. It's kind of, it's a little bit of like, I can't control my life. I'm going to control someone else's first. Oh my God, here. amazing. Yeah, so, I was, I was addicted to The Sims. That was like, yeah. My honestly, I think in a way like, and it's interesting because you were talking about play and then you talk about like you playing the Sims, right? And yeah. to me, I think it's important if you're running your business, which is like adulting in a way that you also have time to nourish that inner child. Because oh, yeah. if you think about it, like when I think of like the chakra system, right? Like your childhood, your early years of childhood, your development of your subconscious, which is going to be where your patterns lie that's developed between the ages of zero and seven eight years old so that's also the the place of stability right like Mm. like if you see the root chakra that's about stability it's the grounding it's the foundation piece so with your business you can't really um accelerate and level up if that grounding stability of nourishing your inner child is bypassed interesting Um, you know, that's, that's just my take on it. Um, you have to nourish your inner child. And I know for me, like why, you know, I've just, I've been focusing more on my podcast, but this month I've just been, of course, like navigating through a lot of death and challenges in that sense. But 
my -hmm. focus and my health has been a huge thing too. But the last piece for me right now is finishing my book, right? And Mm. that to me, if I'm writing a book about overcoming childhood trauma and ancestral karma, right? That's what my book has been about. That's because that's the foundational piece of your business. And there has to be play. There has to be nourishment um, in order for the structure that is your business to be on stable grounds. Because if you are building that business, that online empire on a foundation that's cracked, meaning where is there instability in your life? Things are going to crumble. There's going to be an imbalance and it's not going to be as strong to be sustainable. Mm, That's so true. You know, it's very much like, what are you building a house on? Quicksand or concrete? You Mm -hmm. know, and that that foundation is you, right? Mm -hmm. Um, It's been a really interesting shift for me because I built my business in quarantine. Right. And I had... Uh, the tiniest bit, you know, I've said this before and people think it's like so much money. I had the tiniest bit of a severance when I was let go uh, in quarantine. So that was like kind of what I used to invest in Nina because that's how I started my business was hiring Nina in CEO skills. Highly, highly, highly recommend working with her. And for me, (laughs) I know our girl. So I joined CEO skills. I kind of got a lay of the land in the business space and I built from there. And I was bored, you know, like I hate to say it. I was in my apartment doing jack shit in New York City in my tiny shoebox. I mean, with all due respect, with 10 years experience working for some of the biggest brands in the world, Prada, Kendall and Kylie, Sam Edelman, Rebecca Minkoff, like I would hope I know how to build a business. That's what that was my career was building new divisions for them. So if I'm stuck inside with no distractions, I think I should be able to build a business. You go, And I did. Right. And so that's what I did for the year and a half is I was just stuck inside. Then I moved back home to St. Louis where I was stuck inside. I wasn't doing anything. And with all due respect, like it's I mean, for me, I was like, this should have been inevitable, like the success that I've had because I don't have anything else. So about summer last year, I was like, I need to be social. I'm I'm at a stage of my life where I'm open to a more serious romantic relationship. So I need to be dating in order to meet people, right? And connecting with people. And there came a point where I was like, I don't enjoy the success that I have knowing that I'm doing it by giving up an entire life. So Mm -hmm. my new challenge is like, I need to learn what success looks like while taking time off, while dating, while enjoying my friends, while trying new things, while pushing myself personally, taking care of my health. And if I cannot learn success through that lens, I haven't been successful. So that's been my big challenge the past year is like, success is not success if you're stuck inside. Success to me will be all of it together, coinciding, running the team that I have, operating the businesses that I have while being me and living my human experience, you know? Totally. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing too, like those are the pieces of filling up your cup and nourishing you first, because like Mm -hmm. you were saying earlier, like to me, just through my experience, like it's really challenging for me to be there for other people, especially as someone who grew up as a habitual people pleaser, right? Like Mm. that was a big thing that I dismantled and cultivated better boundaries. But I know for me in my journey, like I can't take care and nourish other people if I'm not taking care of myself because then one, it's not coming from like my best self and I'm not showing up in my highest um, space and my highest, uh, quality of who I am. And two, it's just not being in integrity with the core values of my business. Um, so I think that's the other piece, you know, like I said, so I've just navigating through my health issues of like multiple seizures and losing my memory and in and out of hospitals and doctor's appointments and brain scans and tests and all these things. I, I, I couldn't take care of myself, let alone take care of my team, you know? And I think a lot of people were really respectful and really honoring and just holding that space for me. But I also know that there's a reason behind challenges that we may arise, right? Yeah. Like you being let go and then being sitting in this home allowed you to create your own empire. And I know for me, like 
what I've been navigating through, I've been able to heal relationships with my parents. I've gotten closer with them. I've been able to take care of myself and like do the last part of my healing. I've been able, I'm actually, this is my second book I'm writing. I was writing my first book. Yeah. I wrote my first book, which was my memoir. But then I was like, people are going to be like, who's this bitch? And why should I read her book? So now I'm writing my my second book, you know what I mean? And and I'm publishing my second book first um, to cultivate that trust and to share people like, yo, this has been my experience and I'm going to share with you like things that can really help you. Because for me, I think a really important piece when we're talking about that foundation building in business, like if you don't take care of yourself and your needs and you don't take care of the traumas and, um, you know, the, the pains and the unresolved issues of the past, especially when they come up, you can't bypass it anymore. Because to me, like if I'm going to build an ethical business of integrity, I have Mm -hmm. to make sure that that foundation is solid. And that foundation of my business is me. Yep. That's it. So for me, for me, it's like, if I'm the foundation of my online empire, And I know this shit is coming up. I can't ignore it anymore. And I think it's important to share that because all of us have different experiences on what it means to start their business. We have different stories and different journeys. But like we said in the beginning, there's so many of us that are celebrating that and honoring that and respecting that um, within each other. And in a way, like there's... During those challenges and those times, there will be mistakes that you make in your business as well. Oh gosh, um, yes. <laughs> but when you when you make those mistakes, I think like with like being human, you learn from those lessons. And For sure. I think there's a deeper and how level. to make mistakes. You know, you yeah. learn how to do it. Yeah, you learn how to do it, and you learn over time when they arise, how to be more compassionate with yourself and Mm -hmm. also how to be more compassionate with people that you'll teach along the way, especially if you're a teacher or a mentor out there, you know, they're paying you to cut time, right? Like you took, it was time you, I don't want to say you wasted your time, but that time that you, that you experienced with making those mistakes, people are paying you so that they don't have to go through that space. Like you are the bridge to help them get through them. And who knows, they may make mistakes along the way. It's not like, Hey, I'm going to invest in you and I'm going to have everything right. That's not the way it looks. That's bullshit. And if you think that's like, what's going to happen, then you're doing a disservice to yourself because you gain a deeper level of respect for yourself for like, hey, this is what I've accomplished. This is what I've mm-hmm. overcome. And I'm going to tell people what not to do. So rather than focusing on their pain points in a way, you're going to share with them what the solution can be. But if they're stuck in that space, you can be like, hey, I see you. And hey, I'm gonna, I've been there and I'm going to help you get through it. And I think those are the people that really are of service where they can be unapologetically vulnerable and genuine and authentic on the areas in their business and in their life where they may have fucked up or where they mm-hmm. may have made mistakes or where may they have done something wrong or where they have caught themselves or held or had resistance for so long. You know what I mean? I think there's, yep. there's a purpose and reason behind that. And like my prayer is that more people online start to share more of that than rather just the highlight reel of all the wins and all the great things. Because I think if you show both sides, there's a balance and it what makes you human. And it's a deeper level of integrity of who you are as a person. And you know, who the integrity of your business of being compassionate and humanity first, like you said. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that that's something that's important to you. And I think it's important to talk about because when we started, when I, I mean, I I wasn't a we yet. When I started, I did this series on my podcast called What I Did Well and Poorly. And I was like, this is what I've done well and poorly in the past three months. And I did it at the three month mark, the six month mark, the nine month mark and the 12 month mark. And so people could follow along with me and I would say, like, don't make this mistake. Like, this is something I royally fucked up. This is something that I definitely will do again because it's been phenomenal for me. And that was a happy accident. And, 
you know, because the thing is, is like everybody, I think the biggest mistake most people make in business is that they think that anybody, that there's a destination and there's not. And as someone who's arrived at a destination in my success that I have been picturing the past few years, it's a moving target. I have different benchmarks now, right? Now I want cleanliness in our systems. I want different clients. I want to offer different services. And so now I have different goals and I, I am allowing myself the space to be proud that I've kind of landed where I've been working towards getting, but I'm also not going to sit here and act like I am like, great, we're here. Like, let's just sit back and chill forever. Like, no, you know, that's a moving target and it's really not a destination. I will continue to make mistakes. I've made I made a, you know, we in our business, I mean, I have to take full responsibility for it. You know, we made a mistake last week that I thought was pretty bad and I had to apologize. I had to do some cleanup. I had to do some work to kind of fix that, step in, nurture the client, make sure that they felt validated, that they had every right to feel upset with the service and work with the team to make sure that they felt cultivated that, yes, we made mistakes and we're probably not done. So how do we fix it? And how do we learn from this so that we can mitigate it in the future? And it's now kind of like dissipated and calmed. But the thing is, is like learning how to communicate, hey, we made a mistake. You're right to be mad. We're also doing what we can. How do we make you happy? How do we come back from this? How do we make sure to, you know, stay strong in our working relationship so that this can continue? Da, 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 da. Learning that messaging, and granted, I've ran teams before, so this is not a new situation for me, but having that messaging and like going through that process and working with the team, the team feels more empowered. My client feels nurtured, taken care of, seen, and we fixed it for her. So she feels taken care of in that way. And I know now that. Other things that come up, we now have the framework to move through those with a little bit more grace. And I'm not ever going to act like we won't make mistakes. We will. But I'm also not going to harp on them because then I need to be giving just as much energy to every single win we've had in the past year. And if I'm not giving all of those incredible attention, I can't give incredible attention to the downfall either because they're going to happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like everything needs to be given the same amount of energy. You want to celebrate, you know, the wins. Cool. Then, and you want to feel the lows and like really demonize and like harass yourself and like really get down on yourself about how fucked up that situation was and how bad you failed. And then you better be as high as possible on every single solitary win you achieve. And we don't typically do that as people. So for me, it gives me a little space to say like, Hey, these wins are going to happen. These lows are going to happen. And both are allowed. I, I welcome both into my space and I will migrate through them as gracefully as I can. Amen. And it's interesting you say that because yesterday I was having like a really hard conversation with a family member too and talking about mistakes <clears throat> and, you know, just the garbage that can arise at that time. But mm-hmm. to me, when you see those mistakes that you've made and like you own it, that you fucked up, once you've really accepted it and acknowledged it and you're not bypassing it or like, like you said, demonizing it or dwelling on it in a way you can turn that trash, <laughs> that mistake. It's like you're composting it. And then there, it becomes yeah. more, it's like, it becomes more like new, there's nutrients to it that again, will oh make you gosh, more, yes. that will make you more compassionate that will, um, nourish, you know, how to do better. And I think that's the the thing is like, when you know better, you do better and you learn a lot from mistakes. And totally. like I said, in business, More. you will make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. In business, you will make mistakes. Like it's inevitable in life. You will make mistakes. It's inevitable. Like you are on this journey to learn. You're on this journey to help. And the way that we help is again, through compassion. The way that we help is through experience. And You know, if you think that your business is going to be like, and that's been the challenge, especially in the spiritual community is all like love and light. And it's like, there's shadow to it too, but the stars shine brightest in the darkest of night. So when you've been able to overcome those challenges um, and you accept and you take ownership and responsibility, which a lot of people still don't do because they're afraid of how it's going to affect their image that they've fakely like presented and built up online and on social media and granted 
there are more people that are sharing like, hey, I needed a mental health day today. Like there is more vulnerability in the space. So I can't like bash that at all. But there is also like, I just, I pray that more people let their clients know, like you're going to make mistakes because I don't want my clients to to belittle themselves or to hold themselves back or to play small or to doubt themselves because they made a mistake, but the people they follow online never show that mistake. Mm. I am going to be thinking for weeks about, you have to turn this into a post. You said, what you said in case you missed it was your mistakes aren't trash, they're compost. Like Sabrina, that's gold. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Because everybody's so afraid to trash their home. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's like, no, you're making compost for your garden in essence, you know? And there is what if that is the best analogy I've heard in a really long time. Thank you. Yeah. That came to me yesterday. And so it was interesting because I was having a challenging conversation that that's was the trigger of like my deep childhood wounds. So again, for me, for the foundation oh. of my business has been healing my childhood wounds in that sense. And that's what my whole book is about. So to have that conversation, like I felt like my sister who just passed, like I felt her like pushing me to, to have these difficult challenges. And that's the other thing. Like there are things that, that come in our lives, like, and I think like in quarantine, a lot of people were furloughed and released in that sense. And in the beginning and at the, at the beginning and when that happened, like that can fucking hurt the ego. Like that can really mm -hmm. be, there's a lot of thoughts that can come up at that time of like, why yeah. did this happen to me? Like a lot of uh, victimization, you know, especially when it first happens and it's coming and you aren't ready for it. And then over mm -hmm. time you can go from, you know, that victim to victorious and right from that, you know, you need to feel what you're feeling and to go from that space. And then from there, now that you've overcome it, how can I show up? Like I got this. And it's some people, depending on how, um, how much work they've done on themselves, it can, they can get to it faster. Um, mm -hmm. but if you, if it is taking you a little longer time, like that is because you need to take time with yourself and you need to mm -hmm. take radical responsibility on what areas of your life like need to change? Where can you take more responsibility? So again, I, I like I was saying before that those are moments of devotion um, to nourish yourself. So again, those mistakes that have become garbage to compost in that way, the nourishment and those mm -hmm. mistakes, again, I think it makes you more human. And it makes you, and that's again, like you're saying, the humanity first. There's There's a level of integrity that can come from that. Um, and that's, that's just been my prayer and that I've been putting out there, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. to see more online is more integrity <laughs> of the fact that people fuck up the fact that we make mistakes, the fact that we're only human and we're all doing our best based on our level of awareness. But that's, that, that's the kind of business personally that I want to make. And that's why you know, for funny. me, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's funny. I said something on a Q and A on Instagram the other day, maybe like last week, where um, someone was like, "I really am so scared to make a mistake in my business," and I said, "I'm not, because we are imperfect people running a flawed business because it will never be perfect mm -hmm. for imperfect people." And I had a client of mine reach out to me and say, "Yeah, but I really don't want mistakes in my business." And I said, I can't promise that, mm. you know, like I can't promise that we won't make a mistake with you. That's not something mm. I can ever promise. We're flawed mm. humans. I'm not going to place the expectation on myself or my team to be perfect at all times. I do have an expectation to be great and to be considering three steps ahead and to be, you know, nurturing and kind and warm. But like, I can't expect perfect I can, I can also promise, though, that if we make a mistake, we'll do our best to redeem it and we'll ask what that looks like and we'll show up for someone in a way that is nurturing and kind and, you know, takes full responsibility and all of those things. So, you know, at the end of the day, the fear around mistakes, it's like, dude, you're 
you're avoiding something. People think that it's like, there was an example that I gave on another podcast recently, and I don't remember what it was, but it's like, people are trying to, like a plane crash, right? People are saying like, well, a plane crash happens to only like so many people. And if I, you know, and the right plane, like if it runs well, won't crash. And it's like, that's not a mistake in business. A mistake in business is like tripping over something because you didn't see it while you were walking down the, the road. You know what I mean? Like, that's what a mistake is. Like, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. So, all this energy around like, how do I avoid it? Like that could be creative energy. That could Mm -hmm. be connection. That could be you showing up and, you know, being open or vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And that energy that just like seeps so deeply into like avoiding a mistake, like you will make a mistake. There's a Mm -hmm. quote that I love by, uh, oh shoot, I'm going to, I forget who it is great book. I forget the book. You'll have to look it up. But basically the quote is, now that I don't have to be perfect, I can be good. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the idea is like, if I'm not forcing myself to be perfect anymore, now I can be good. I can be good at what I do, you know? Totally. It's It's funny because that's what we've been... That's what we've been pressured to believe, you know, especially like our generation during like our teen development years. It was like the picture perfect, like this is who you need to be. This is what your body needs to look like. This is and there was all these expectations and rules on what it means to be perfect. But we're perfectly Mm -hmm. imperfect. And Mm -hmm. you were talking about mistakes like this recording, for instance, uh, I forgot my HDMI to like lightning broad for the camera I normally use. It was left in a laptop bag and I didn't bring my laptop with me. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And I was like, it's fine. I've got my backup webcam. And then before, you know, we got, we recorded this, like there was a mishap with getting on. There was a mishap of links. Those are mistakes. Like those are mistakes and they can be small. They can be big. And again, you'll it's not learn. Like it ruined the experience for me. It's not like it ruined the experience. And I know some clients of mine would have a panic attack about that. Like, oh my gosh, like I'm late to the thing or I had one of the thing. And it's like, eh, what are you going to do though? <laughs> you know? Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. You want to know how you run three businesses? You decide what's going to upset you and almost nothing is allowed to. But see, that in itself is like, a pattern or a trigger from something from childhood as well, which is why when people work with me, you're going to be going in deep because I like to stir the pot. This is what I've been telling my family all week. Like I'm a Mm -hmm. button pusher and I like to stir the pot, but it's coming from the most loving space possible because Mm. I want you to recognize the patterns that aren't actually supporting your highest self. And if those patterns aren't supporting your highest self, like the self-judgment, the insecurities, the freaking out about making a mistake. When did you make a mistake from childhood that like your mom or someone like was so disappointed in you? And then from there on, you felt like you needed to be perfect. All of those things are rooted from childhood, plain and simple. I say the same thing to my clients because I have been in therapy for years. I have family members who are therapists. Therapy is like a very open topic in our family. And something that I um, push on my people is I'm like, at the end of the day, you're upset about something when you were seven, period. Everything. Totally. Almost everything comes back to that. So if someone's like, I'm just really nervous because this person it sounds like they're going to go with a different web designer, let's say, right? I'm like, guess what? You can sit here and say that you're upset that that person might go to someone else. But really, you're like, they're going to go to someone else, which means that people don't like me, which means that my friends are talking bad about me like they did when I was six on the playground and they made fun of me for wearing some weird outfit. So at the end of the day, you have to take a look at what your deepest trigger is. And if that client goes to someone else, are you going to say, okay, well, I'm not good at my job and take care of the symptom? Or are you going to say, hey, younger me who is six on the playground and you feel like people are making fun of you and not friends with you on the playground, I love you and you're supported because one of those will fix it and one of those will be a Band-Aid. And I know my biggest, 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 deepest fear on the planet is that my mom will die. And it's totally doesn't make any sense. It's the most illogical thing. She has a job and a great house and a great life. Like she's good. Like my mom's good. Yeah. She's healthy. She's everything's fine. But I know that that's my deepest trigger. And when I lose a client, let's say to someone else, or when they don't decide to join the service, I used to be like, 
I'm never going to make money. That's not the actual problem. The actual problem was I'm not going to make money, which means I won't be able to support my mom the way that I want to support her in her later years. And if I can't support her, what if something happens to her? What if then she passes and then I'm alone and my favorite person is gone? And so when people went to other services, I started nurturing her, the girl that was like, I used to say this to myself, your mom is safe. Your mom is alive. Your mom is healthy. And that actually relieved everything. Because I was like, I'm not scared about that client going elsewhere. I'm scared that my mom's going to die. Like, mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to make sense. But like, that is what I had to learn to tell myself because that's the actual fear, the actual rooted fear. I'm mm-hmm. going to lose my mom. And, there, and they all, there's like a dot connection in understanding like how that's all interwoven in that space like you said even though it may be pretty illogical it is what like that's what it is I hear you I mean for me like the biggest thing for me is like I've been clearing out my debris of like my childhood because I had a very challenging childhood like with death and so Mm. I know for instance the patterns and the death that's been coming up for me lately um especially because 15 years ago when I graduated high school My best friend, Sarah, took her life. And then two weeks after that, my grandfather died. Here, 15 years later, my grandmother dies. Three weeks later, my childhood best friend, who's also Sarah, dies. So I'm seeing seeing this mirror that's happening. And in between those 15 years, I was in serious deep darkness. I was in um, serious wounding. I like called a suicide hotline, but then I found myself, I got struck by lightning. There was so much in that space. And so without those patterns happening for me now, it's important for me to recognize what I did then. And how do I dismantle it now so that pattern doesn't come back around? So that's Mm. where I'm having better communication because back then I couldn't communicate. I'm opening up my throat, having those difficult conversations that I've needed to have. Those moments and those things are also happening. I don't feel victim of, you know, my grandmother dying and like my sister dying. I don't feel victimized by that. I know that's coming up for me. And because the patterns that are following right after, like they don't have power over me anymore. Right. And that's the thing. Like if you're having an issue with your business where it's like, oh my gosh, more and more of these clients, I'm like, they're not signing up with me. There's Mm -hmm. a deeper understanding and there's a deeper lesson for you to learn about why this is happening or a deeper root that it's coming up for you to address. Because if things aren't going your way, there's something better. The universe is saying yes, no, or there's something better. Yep. And so you have to understand that regardless if it's personal, because I don't think there's a separation between what's personal and what's business. Like I said, I think like your business and your brand is an extension of you. So you need to take care of your personal shit for you to run, especially if you want to run an ethical business that is coming from a space of, like you said, humanity. It's coming from the space of, of reality, of connection, of community. And that's all from the heart, right? Yeah. Ethical businesses are coming from the heart. And so you you embody that heart. And so again, okay. that heart can't be nourished. That heart can't be expanded if you're still not allowing yourself to look at the deeper patterns from childhood, from teenage, whatever that they can be. And then I feel like once you're able to acknowledge and dismantle, then you're going to be able to show up in a way where you're unstoppable. Because you're embodied in your power and something of the past doesn't have power over you anymore. Totally agree. You know, I got in a really bad car accident in 2017 and I should have died. It could have been really fatal. It was a life-changing moment, right? Wow. And I went to therapy. I, I'm i telling you, nobody would like have recognized me before this car accident I was a nightmare to deal with. I was an asshole. I was a stuck up bitch. I was insecure. I was projecting on other people. I was materialistic. Before the accident, you're saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just a nightmare. I don't like who I was. And I I didn't like her at the time, you know, Mm -hmm. which is probably why I was acting like that. And I was just not great. And it's funny because, you know, you hear about like life and death experiences, which is this was for me. 
And people come back and they're like, I want to spend more time with my family. I want to settle down. I want to have kids. And like, that was so not my reaction. My reaction was like, if I'm going to be here and have a second chance, I want to do something good. Like, mm-hmm. I want to make something of, the, of this time that's, like, worthwhile. And Amen. my first business was called Room for All, and it was a women's empowerment and networking event company. So we would do empowerment events. We would do networking events. We would have these dinners. I had a directory of all female-led businesses in the country that you could, like, find someone locally and all the stuff, and I ended up selling the company. And for me, you know – this second round is very much like, don't go back to a place where you're like, who am I looking at in the mirror? And that has been my biggest driving force with everything is like, when I go to sleep at night, can I stand by my decisions I made today? Mm. Do I stand by how I ran my business? Do I stand by what I said online? Do I stand by how I made someone feel? Do I stand by how I showed up for myself? When I lay in this bed and I go to sleep, not like, did I do well? Not, did I make someone happy? Not, did I say the right thing? Do I agree that I acted in alignment? Was Mm -hmm. I being the way that I want to be with a second chance? Mm -hmm. And if no, I'll do better tomorrow, you know? Well, that's the thing. When you know better, you do better. And to to know better, you have to be radically honest of – that maybe you made that mistake. You have to be radically honest that like maybe you made the wrong decision. Maybe right. like you didn't behave in a way that you know you're here to behave and that's okay. But I think again, we need to embrace that and we need to be vulnerable in that space of being like, hey, this was me because I think that's where we really ge- like genuinely build like real um, heartfelt connection with people. And I think mm-hmm. that's what this world really, really needs right now is, you know, there's, there's so much fear and fear mongering and so much of this noise to kind of distract us. But if we can connect from the heart, this is, this is what we need. So I want to, I want to talk about like your, one of your businesses, you have me time and you're talking and you have this, you're, you're helping people like have a moment for themselves and to, Mm -hmm. to really nourish themselves. What was the drive of that? This actually started because of the car accident. So my therapist told me to start journaling and having a place to get my brain to put thoughts on paper. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think when I started really taking therapy seriously, I was allowing myself to relinquish control. Mm -hmm. And there's something in writing where your subconscious comes out, you know, your subconscious will be like, I'm nervous about this. And then you'll be like, Oh, am I? Like, I didn't know. Like, okay, great. Like, let's go from there. And so I started journaling. And so I started buying journals and I tried this journal for like six months to a year, this journal or this journal. And I hated some and I loved some and I liked some and some were great and some were discontinued and some were terrible, whatever it was. And then I started doing affirmations on a daily basis, which I truly believe can honestly change a person's life, even though so many people want to act like you can't just look in a mirror and say nice things to yourself. And it's like, yeah, you can, bitch. Yes, you can. (laughs) Who says Um, you can't? (laughs) Yeah, watch me. I can tell you right now that looking in a mirror and telling yourself lies for a year straight will actually change your life. And then, um, you know, really just taking in multiple senses, you know, creating a multi-sensory experience. So this was stuff that kind of came out of that, uh, the post accident therapy. And so I decided to brand it, you know, I journal in a very specific way because I didn't like, I didn't find a journal that had everything I wanted. You know, I wanted something that was like, what are the three main things I have to get done today? Another way I run multiple businesses and have a big life is if I have only three things to get done today, what are they and do them? You know, like everything else can fall by the wayside or get pushed, but what are the three non-negotiables, you know? And uh, so what do I need to do? Do I have space to write? What is an affirmation for myself? What promise do I give myself? And so I branded this journal uh, added in eucalyptus oil because I wanted, like I said, to create a multi-sensory experience. And I've been using eucalyptus oil for years to kind of ground that practice and then affirmation deck of cards. So the idea is that for free, you can find one of our me time playlists. We have different kinds for different vibes and different moods, whether you're meditating or working or, you know, listening to some like really good seasonal music, whatever it could be. We have six or seven playlists now that people are loving. 
Uh, so we have that to kind of contribute sound. We urge you to like grab your favorite beverage. Could be water, could be a LaCroix, could be a coffee. Uh, so that's two senses. You pull a card, you read the affirmation, you write in your journal, you sign it, which kind of like solidifies it and locks it in, in my opinion, and kind of holds you to that. And you go through your day. And when you get the me time kit, you're given, um, a card that kind of tells you if you only have one minute, do this from the routine. If you only have two minutes, do this. If you only have, you know, one, five, seven, 10, 20 minutes is what we do. Because the whole thing takes 20 minutes and people are like, I don't have time to be journaling. And I'm like, do you think I'm just sitting writing in on a blank notebook for two hours? Like, no, 20 minutes, like 20 minutes max. And it's just such a focused exercise to give yourself one fucking breathing moment, you know, just mm -hmm. a moment for you. Because to your mm -hmm. point, you have nothing to give if your cup's not overflowing, mm -hmm. nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that in a world where we are so connected, I mean, thank you to Instagram for that, that we get to see other parts of the world and international travel is more attainable. And we're so connected more as a world, but we now feel responsibility to the world. And at the end of the day, I truly have a belief that the way to change the world is to affect three people a day in your space. And I contribute to charities. I try to get involved in political causes that mean a lot to me. And I think that all of that stuff matters. But at the end of the day, like so many people care so much about what's going on overseas and they are shitty to their friends or they're terrible to their family. So how do you show up for the people that you love the most and that are there for you and that have your back? And can you be the best person for them so that you can then go out into the world and ripple effect with positive change, right? Amen. I hear you. And I know like those are, that's a big thing for me. That's a non-negotiable is mm -hmm. how can I really make that impact um, for myself first, because I got to share from that overflow. And then how can mm -hmm. I spread it out? It's been for me, my family. Um, I think just growing up as like a Italian with like very old school traditions in that space. And then from there, like, how can I continue to spread that out and spread that out and spread that out? So mm -hmm. to close this out, this has been like such an amazing conversation. I appreciate you. Um, I want to ask some quick lightning round questions. Let's go. All right. What does sovereignty mean to you? Uh, stepping into full alignment in a way that you can give to others. Amazing. What was the book that revolutionized your life? Atomic Habits. Hmm. Nice. I haven't read that one, but I've wanted to. Oh my God. I've read it like six or seven times. That or Amazing. The Alchemist. The Al Alchemist is one of my top three for sure. That and The Untethered yeah. Soul. Absolutely. Untethered Soul is uh, a great one. Yeah. What would you say was the best concert that you ever attended that really just like impacted your life? Billie Eilish, New York City, Madison Square Garden a week ago. <laughs> I am not the same person. I am changed. I am different. Thank you, Billy, for that experience. It was a therapeutic experience. I loved it. Amazing. What would you say to your younger self? Uh, dream bigger. Hmm. Where can we hear more from you and see more of you? Oh, I like that one. Uh, I like all of them, but um, that's a cute one. Uh, you can follow the team. I do a lot of educational uh, different pieces of information on my Instagram at team AP consulting. Uh, you can also follow me personally at Ashley, A S H L I underscore P or follow me time at have a moment for yourself. Amazing. And what last little nugget of wisdom would you love to share with everyone who's listening? Uh, the thing that I find myself saying the most is that shame can kill anything quicker than any mistake on the planet or any problem or anything on ever, any relationship, any business. So the more that you can allow yourself to be infallible and to be half and to be kind of good and kind of earning and starting and new, that's where success lies is, you know, by allowing yourself to be imperfect and flawed. <sighs> Mic drop. I told you all this was going to be a powerful conversation. So, <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ashley. So much. I appreciate you. This was super special. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Go check her out. She's got so many different spaces. You can find them all in the show notes. And I know Ashley and I are so grateful that you tuned in. And we really just, I'm just speaking for her because I know like 
No, I love this, Sabrina. Oh, thanks, babe. So that you are able to take something from this that can really help you and support you as you continue forth to unleash your medicine with the world. So thank you again for tuning in and we'll be seeing you next week. Take care. Yeah. <laughs>